I got to get your, your broad view first. It's been such a remarkable week, at least on Wall Street, when it comes to crypto, because it seems like every day a new investment firm, uh, this week it was Morgan Stanley and B of A, are trying to make an institutional call on where it fits in a diversified portfolio. What's your overall view? Yeah, well, that's exactly right. That's been the story of the last year is institutions uh, finding crypto, finding Bitcoin specifically. You know, in my view, all of this, whether we're talking about startup valuations, whether we're talking about SPACs, whether we're talking about Bitcoin cryptocurrency broadly, NFTs specifically, which I know you've covered extensively on the show over the last couple of weeks, it's all a part of this broader trend of having so much capital in the system. It's all about investors reaching for return further and further out the risk spectrum. And you're seeing institutions respond to that. And I think rightfully so. And that goes for treasuries, that goes for investment management firms, that goes for the big Wall Street banks. When someone like a B of A comes out and says uh, it's too volatile uh, to be a store of value, uh, it's too volatile to be, a, a, at least at this stage, an efficient means of payment. Does that bother you? Or do you actually believe they are still legitimately they? Do you believe crypto is still ironing out very large kinks here? Absolutely, crypto is still ironing out very large kinks. But you have to look at it in context and look at what you're comparing it to. Yes, we still have kind of the haters of, of Bank of America coming out and saying that. But if you look at the number of institutions who were skeptics three years ago, relative to today, that number has declined dramatically. And that's a result of the infrastructure growing in maturity. Um, you know, you were just talking about a second ago Visa and uh, some of the kinks that Visa is still ironing <laughs> out, whether that's in terms of high fees. Yes, there are high fees in Bitcoin and Ethereum as well. Uh, but a lot of that hand wringing, I think, is very misplaced because if you look at the trajectory of the technology and you look at the problems that it's solving, it actually, even today, day stacks up very well relative to the legacy system. I don't know when the last time you tried to do a bank transfer to Zambia was. I tried to do one uh, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> and let me tell you, I was very tempted to call up my counterparty and ask them if they could just accept Bitcoin instead, because it would have been an easier process. Huh. I'm tempted to ask you <laughs> why you were transferring funds to Zambia, but I won't. <laughs> Um, feel free for another to, day. Yeah, for another, another, day. another day, perhaps. A donation. I've, I've been surprised. <laughs> good, good. Uh, I've been surprised <laughs> over the past, say, five years, how little success there's been in blockchain startups, like in the mainstream. And it struck me over the past week that part of what this NFT thing has done is get the mainstream, not just investor, but person on the street, talking about the applicability of blockchain beyond Bitcoin, beyond Ethereum. And that's exactly what Metacoven, who bought this Beeple uh, piece, was, was going for. It wasn't just because of the value of the piece. It's part of this move by crypto capitalists to expand what we think blockchain can do, right? That's exactly right. And what's really cool to me is for the first time we're seeing people using this technology, whether it's on the artist side who are creating the NFTs, whether it's on the consumer side, people are using this technology without realizing what it is in many cases, without having blockchain even enter the conversation, which is exactly how it should be. You know, for too long, the emphasis on the value of the technology has been wrapped up in the technology itself. People are excited about blockchains for the sake of blockchains. That's not right. People need to be looking at the unique things that blockchain technology is enabling. And, you know, I loved that you had people on the show. You know, I, I've spent a lot of time talking to musical artists, other artists who are coming in and making use of this technology. And again, just like I was saying about Bitcoin relative to the financial system, artists are flocking to this because they can see the existing system of how they get treated, of how they are intermediated, of how they do not accrue the value that they're creating for the world is broken for them. And they want something different. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.